Hi there, welcome to Get Good. This is a quick video. Well, I actually don't know how long it will be, so we'll just have to see as we get on. A quick video explaining how you can use Blender to generate references for lighting or potentially um, colors in your, your miniature modeling and painting. Um, I've not scripted this, I've not rehearsed this. I'm just gonna show you my process. It'll be hopefully quite easy to follow. I'm going to assume no great uh, level of knowledge in 3D programs or applications or things like that. Um, I'll just have to show you how you can get a quick output and then if this is something that's of interest to you, maybe you can look at some of the many, many other Blender tutorials on YouTube. Um, I guess before I dive in, why is this useful? Well, I think sometimes we can get a little bit frustrated taking pictures of our models with a torch over it to try and find a reference and moving stuff into 3D software gives us an opportunity to have a really high degree of control over how we generate our references. Um, I, I think it's perhaps a middling utility depending on how you wanted to go about it, but enough people have asked me about it that I thought I'd just show you. So I think the main thing you're going to need to do uh, first is to head to blender.org if you've not already to download the software. You can see the URL there, blender.org. Um, and Blender 4.1 is out, which is kind of neat. So get that, download it and install it. Blender is a free bit of software um, created by a lot of wonderfully passionate people. Um, and if you're interested in supporting them, there's a nice big donate button at the top, um, which I've done in the past. And I'd really encourage people to do so if they use Blender heavily. Um, but once Blender is uh, downloaded and installed, you get this uh, nice bit of software here. Now, you can fiddle with the settings to your heart's content, but let's not worry about that. We're really just trying to be dumb and simple in this, so let's not worry too much about it. So on this um, initial page, just new file general is A-OK. -okay. And you can see here we have a camera, which is this thing. We have a cube, which is default objects, and we have a light. And all of this is kind of useful. Um, now, the first thing I would do if I've, if you've never used any sort of 3D software before is just get used to navigating in Blender um, and 3D space. So basically, if you hold down your middle mouse button and move your mouse, you can rotate around the scene. If you hold shift, you can pan around the scene. And if you hold control uh, and that middle mouse, you can zoom in and out. Like that is the main way you're going to move around the space. That is the main way to move in Blender. Um, and with that, you can kind of orientate yourself in the scene. It's really important. Um, so, so kind of, if you cannot move around the space, you're going to have a bad time. Um, the second thing you're going to do is you're going to go on this right-hand column and uh, you'll see one of the day icons. It's called Render. You're going to change this from the Render Engine Eevee to Cycles. Uh, and if you have a powerful uh, GPU graphics card, you're going to change your device from CPU to GPU compute. And really what we are doing there is we're telling the, the software, hey, we're going to use more realistic lighting for this scene. Um, and we're going to use our Meaty GPU because we're all gamer nerds and, and naturally have those in our computers to render stuff quicker. That That is really what we're doing there. All of these settings we could talk about for hours and hours and hours. So we're just going to brush over them for now. But basically, once you have these two things on, good time to roll, uh, and we're doing slightly more realistic stuff. And like, if we are so inclined, we can render this now. You can get to here on the top, render, render image, or you can hit F12 on your keyboard, uh, and it will render as a cube, um, which is, you know, pretty interesting. Uh, if you were doing um, a study on volumes of cubes, this would be quite useful. Uh, and indeed, the volumes getting started video, I did use Blender to do a bit of this rendering. But if you're into miniature painting, you probably don't need to know how to um, kind of do volumes for a cube. So we're going to skip past this. I'm just going to close this window for now. Right. So if we don't want a cube, what are other options? Well, uh, if you delete that, um, you can see if you hit Shift A, which is basically the add menu, um, or you can add it from the top here, there's an add menu here. Um, we can add some primitives, which might be useful to you. Um, so you can see we've got a cube, a sphere, um, an icosphere mesh, which is basically complex stuff, uh, cylinder, colon, torus, a monkey, if you're so inclined. Um, the monkey is great. I will hear no bad words about the monkey. Um, and here, I'll again, do a quick render if you want to see what a monkey looks like. Nice and easy and cool. So, you can be, again, 
probably don't want a monkey and that's fine um so i'm going to delete this so okay you want a 3d model to use as a reference well where are you going to go so i think an obvious thing to state is that uh the major miniature manufacturers the likes of games workshop very intentionally do not have 3d models of their stuff on the internet for very good reason you know that's their ip uh, and if you're interested in finding out where to find uh 3D models of Games Workshop stuff, this is not the video for you. Um, that would be illegal and a crime, bad crime. Um, so we can kind of need to find like good proxies. So a place I like to use, heading back to our browser, uh, is this place, sketchfab.com. Um, it is a cool site where people have uploaded loads of stuff. You can buy some of this stuff as well if you're so inclined, if you're doing uh, projects like that. Um, but really, again, we're just getting started and thinking of something that, you know, people might typically want to reference for a night is a good place to look. So go here, you got this menu at the top, you click into it and whatever you search, you're going to make sure this is ticked downloadable because if we can't download it, that's going to be kind of a set time for us. And you can see like once I've hit that, it's already pulled up a load of um, potential things. Um, skill references, quite useful. And in fact, actually, because I'm weird and just changing things on the fly, let's take the skull reference as a, as a good starting point. So I'm gonna click on this skull. It actually loads you a preview of the 3D model, which is really good. You can kind of get your, uh, the sense of like how this model is structured, which is really nice. Um, but the, the most important thing here is um, this standard 3D model. And I think it's probably a good point, Martin Jario, you're you're the mvp of this model go check out their art station that's kind of cool um but we're going to hit the download um 3d model and it's going to give you lots of potential options um the way i typically always do it is always take the original format this is an obj it's four megabytes that's wonderful i'm just going to hit download uh, that's going to download wonderful wonderful it's called downloadable uh, and this is great so what i'm going to do is open the zip file uh, and you can see in here is textures and source. Um, the thing we kind of really want is the source because we, we really are interested in the model, not necessarily the textures that are put over it. Like you might want to use the textures for stuff if you really like them. Um, but in terms of miniature painting, there's not necessarily going to be a one-to-one. -one, so let's not focus on that right now. I'm going to click into source and there's a zip within a zip, which is my favorite thing. So I'm going to open that. And then here we have our OBJ. So I'm just going to drag that into my downloads folder uh, and there it exists. So I'm going to jump back to Blender. Here, I'm going to get to file, import, uh, and obviously we want the, the file type that corresponds to what we just downloaded. So OBJ is what we want. I'm going to click on there. It's going to give you my menu. I'm going to get to my downloads folder, click on the OBJ, and then here is our skull. And isn't it just a great skull? Now, once it's in, you're probably going to want to scale it up. Um, so you can hit S on your keyboard or there's actually a scale button here. Um, I'm going to hit S and you can go bigger or smaller. I'm going to go bigger. And like here you can see uh, our skull. And now we need to be thinking about, okay, well, I have the model. How do I want to light it? What do I want my reference to be? Um, and I think the main thing, or certainly the thing that I do first, is I want to set my camera to where my kind of ideal will be in terms of my, my painting reference. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this button, which takes you to the camera view. And you can see, well, this is maybe not necessarily the most useful view. So I'm gonna hit this little, little tiny button here um, that you can press um, that brings up this side menu. And one of them is view. And one of them is this lock button, which is camera to view. And basically what that means is as we move around the um, the model now, we're moving the camera with it. So we can set a camera that we'll use for all our renders. So I'm just gonna do that. Like most typically I'm gonna be painting front on. Um, and so I'm just gonna zoom this out. I'm gonna get the skull roughly where I would want it to be. And that feels right. So that's, that's the placement I want. That's brilliant. I've moved my camera. I'm not gonna untick this which means that if I move my, my camera, I'd leave the, the camera where it was in the scene. Brilliant, that's fine, that's set, I'm very happy. Now, I wanna plan my lighting. So, by default, we have this um, nice light that comes with it, which is, frankly, perfect for a lot of our uses. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to kind of where I want it to be. Now, you might not necessarily have all these handles, but basically you can use this move um, button, which is G on the hotkey, to move stuff where you want it to be. 
Um, and then you can also use like gizmos like this to move it exactly. Um, there's a lot of tutorials on moving stuff in, um, in Blender, um, but basically like, where's my ideal light? So for this, I'm going to set it such that it's kind of top lit just off the, uh, my left of the model, the model's right. Um, and that feels about right to me. Maybe zoom it out a little bit. Now you notice when I did that, like the model didn't change. Um, and that's because we're in a, essentially a preview, which is this viewport shading. I can click on um, a, a kind of more advanced shading with these buttons. Um, and if I do that now, it's going to think about it for a second uh, and then give me that view. So you can see here that now we have a lighting based off of um, uh, the light that we've created. Now this light, we can, we can edit it. So I've clicked on the light and you can see here there's a little light icon uh, in the bottom. And this is where we can essentially toy with the light. So our options are we have a point light, a sunlight, a spotlight, or an area light. Typically, I really like area lights. Uh, and the reason I like area lights is because I'm a weirdo. Um, no, you, you just have a lot more kind of control over the shadows with an area light. And in principle, it's, it is it is more physically accurate. So it's a really useful thing to have. So our light is now pointing in this weird direction, but we can set it to point um, to our model by um, getting this little grabber here and basically positioning it as such. And you can see we're getting like this really harsh lighting, which is kind of cool. Um, and maybe that's something that you want, but you can toy with this by editing the power settings here. Um, so just again, you can move. Uh, so we'll, number one, set it to an area light. Use this little yellow handle to move it. That's kind of nice. Get it pointed where you want. Uh, and then the next thing you can do is essentially adjust your power. So at the moment it's a thousand watts and we can change this to 500 watts if we want and we get a slightly different result. Um, we can also change the color. So if you want it like a bit more yellow or orangey or blue, you know, whatever kind of color you want, you can set it here and that's all gravy. Um, there is also this size piece. Now the size will affect how big or kind of how diffuse the shadows will be in your scene. Um, so typically I kind of like a big, big thing and, and that's really nice. And so like if I was just painting a skill and wanted that reference, here's like, I'm essentially good to go. And if I hit F12 now, it's going to think about it and then it's going to render it out because we positioned our camera earlier and bang, like we're getting some nice um, light, light sources. I can see the highlights I need to pick out. It's a really good reference for my volumes. Um, but you're probably noticing, well, there's a few facets here. That's that's a bit grim. Um, most stuff doesn't look like this in real life. Um, and to fix this, all you're going to do is you can close that. You click on your skull and you're going to uh, right click on it and hit shade smooth. And what that will do is it will change how it's interpreting the 3D file that we put in. And it's giving us a smoother result. So now if I hit render, we have a nice smooth skull and a really good use uh, kind of utility for future um future works and pieces like that so off to a good start this is a nice result um and you know if i was using this as a simple kind of matte reference that would be good now we should talk about um the texture that's applied to this skull because that will obviously affect how it looks and so if we select our skull you can see on the right hand side there is this icon that's material and i can click on there and it's given it a default map and in here, I can change these values. So if I wanted my skull to be maybe slightly blue and quite dark, I can do that. And it changes that default um, that default value. I can also bring its roughness down, which will make it slightly more reflective. So if you wanted something with a bit more sheen, you could bring that reflection down. Um, but if you're just kind of using a simple light reference, you probably don't want to toy with that too much. Um, like basic light references, I'm probably leaving my roughness, roughness like roughly 0.3, something like that. Um, so based on that, okay, we've changed the material. That's really nice. I'm going to hit F12. I've got a render based on a darker material. Again, it's really useful for my reference purposes. And actually, for most of the work I'm doing in miniature painting, this is probably a good start because I can um, see his highlights. If I was planning something metallic, I can even see like the locations where I'd want my bounces because I can see the points of really low value and stuff like that. 
this is really handy. And if I wanted to save this image to use it for future, I can just go to image on the, on the top here and hit save as or save and you know, save the images where I want. However, we, we kind of kind of have to talk about metallics because a lot of people are going to want to use this for non-metallic metal planning. So we're going to go back to our lovely skull. We're going to go back to uh, our roughness and uh, or kind of the, the, uh, the toggles here on the right hand side. And you see one of them is this metallic. And I'm going to take that metallic from zero to one. And you can see already that has dramatically changed um, how that model is rendered. So if I take quickly take a render here, you can see, wow, this is already a lot more metallic. It's putting a bit more light on the edges and things like that. It, it's toying with um, essentially uh, how that model is perceived by the render engine. So, hey, that's a good start. I can, I can already see a potential start for a metallic um, approach. But roughness and metallic are really linked. So if I take this roughness down a lot to uh, 0.08, uh, you can see the proof in the pudding in terms of that. The, the bigger the highlight, the more rough the surface looks. So if I increase the roughness, ooh, that highlight gets bigger. As I decrease this and it gets shinier, that, um, that light gets smaller. I'm going to hit F12 just so you can see what that render looks like. Bring this more into frame. And we have quite a metallic um, effect. And obviously, like all of this is um, based off of this base color, um, which is quite dark. So I can increase that to be like kind of quite light uh, and play with that a bit more. Um, and that, that fusses with the skull, which is cool. Uh, again, I can take a render. You can see how that looks. Uh, and you can see a lot of intricacies in regards to the eyes and things like that, uh, which is neat. Now, there's, there's a key thing missing, which you've probably realized, which is that if you had an object that was metallic, it reflects the world around it. And this skull is just reflecting this infinite gray void, which is not so useful. So we're going to need to add a world to our scene to light it correctly. Um, and this is where, if there's one thing that, it's not too advanced, but there's a lot of buttons to press, so I'm going to walk it through slightly. So the first thing you're going to need is something called a HDRI. And a HDRI is basically like a light map of a world scene. And we can, we can use that um, to essentially create a world which will be reflected by our metal. Or you can actually use it for all your references for lighting instead of having to position a singular light. Um, but that's of limited utility uh, for miniature painting. It's certainly something that I've never tried. So we're going to go back to the browser that we've used many times. Uh, here is our skull. Thank you again, Martin uh, Jarrio. Um, and we're going to go to our third link, which is polyhaven.com forward slash HDRIs. You can basically just Google HDRIs, and I think Polyhaven comes up first, but it is here. Um, and this is where we're going to download our HDRIs. So you can see on the left-hand column, there are lots of options like outdoor skies, indoor studios, etc. Um, for this guide, I'm just going to pick an outdoor scene because a lot of people seem to really like that like um, sky earth non-metallic metal look. Um, but there is a lot of HDRIs here that you can kind of envision as looking like dungeons and stuff like that, which might be good um, for other references. So I'm going to pick this autumn field because it's nice. Um, and you can see how this autumn gets like kind of viewed on certain objects, um, which is all cool, and how the actual HDRI is. Um, and I think this is just an image that Learn Monk uploaded. Oh, this is the, this is the uh, HDRI in use. I should have checked that before I recorded this video. Anyway, at the top, there is the download button. Um, you can see it's like 4K. You can get a 16K version if you're a lunatic, but I think 4K is generally fine for, for most of the time. You could probably go smaller. Um, you you do want an EXR. You can get like a, a HDR file um, if if like stuff supports it, but EXR is supported by Blender, so I always go for EXR um, and then hit download. And it's going to download. It's going to think about it and it's done. I don't have the fastest internet. So then we're going to go back to um, Blender and we're going to add that HDRI into our world. Now, I think this is about I'm going to slow down a little bit. I can't talk too fast. At the top, you're going to go to shading, which is this tab here. I'm going to click it and it will change everything. Kind of just start by messing you up. You're like, hey, that's, that's the result I want. 
And the reason it looks different is because it's basically trying to give you like a really useful view for texturing, um, which is quite important a lot of the time. Um, and you you know, if you're so inclined, you could take a screenshot of this and it would be useful. Um, but we're doing this properly, goddammit. So here, at the bottom, you get this node view. Now nodes are like my favorite thing in the world, but um, I don't want to um, <clears throat> talk about them too much in this, uh, because uh, it, again, it gets complicated. So I'm just going to walk you through the steps. And then if you're interested, you can um, you can look into it in a bit more detail. So here where it says object, I'm going to click on it and click world. And this is basically saying, this is our, um, the world that is lighting our skull. And you can see at the moment, it's basically set to um, this default gray, which is why our past render just looks a bit muted and dull. Okay, so you'll see that there is a, a little yellow circle. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to drag it out. And once I kind of release the, the left click, it will say, hey, what do you want to add here? Um, and we want to add a, a environment texture. Um, so you see here, I'm, I've just typed in EN. It said, hey, do you want to add an environment texture? Like, yes, I do, my friend. Click that, and um, this block appears. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit open, and that's going to say, hey, what image do you want to load to HDRI? So that EXR I downloaded, I'm gonna click on that and it is in. Wonderful. Hey, we have we've pretty much done it. Um the um the only thing we may want to do is if we want a bit more control over our environment, we may want to apply like a and um, what's called a mapping node. So I'm gonna you see here it says vector at the bottom. I'm gonna drag this out. I'm gonna search mapping. And it says mapping to vector, and it's like, hey, what do you want to do here, my my good friend? Um, and don't worry about this too much yet, because I'm then going to add uh, from this vector button to click here. I'm going to go texture coordinates, um, which is here. Basically, this then lets us um, like rotate stuff and things like that. So we've we've added all of this. This is wonderful. Um, and our work is done. And none of this skull has changed because this skull is using this HDRI to light itself. So we're going to go back to our scene and we're going to do that by clicking here. And going to layout, which is where we kind of started initially. And you can see, hey, our, our HDRI is in. This is wonderful. This is brilliant. And we can see that there is a lot of um, uh, reflections suddenly added. So now, if I hit that render button, oh boy, we go crazy, um, which is kind of what we wanted. And that's awesome. We can see like a whole suite of reflections and bounce reflections and everything like that. And we still have like our primary light in the scene. That's that that's still there, but we're drowning it out with all of this world lighting. So I'm going to close that. And like, what if we want to fine tune and finesse that? Well, um, on our left hand, um, called, not left hand, right hand. I forgot my right and left. Uh, you can see that one of the options is world. Um, so you click that world and it's like, here, here's what we're lighting it with. Here's our, here's our world surface. And the strength of that is one. Now, if I bring this to zero, it goes again and our render kind of forgets it. And so if I go to like 0 0.25, um, we get a much more muted effect. And so now if I render this, you can see the world is darker, the reflections are still there, but our, our initial light, the one that we put in, is still there lighting onto the scene. So you can essentially toy with this to your heart's content. Um, again, really useful for finding some references. The final thing um, which I'd want to touch on is um, if you want to rotate the scene to try different looks. And obviously, like, here's our main light that we added ages ago. Um, and I, I could increase this to, like, 2,000 watts to really, like, give it some umph in the scene. Um, the thing is, though, that, like, the sun is a lot brighter than our light. So it's always going to be a little drowned out and stuff like this. Um, but if we go back to our world view, um, the thing that we did, we added that texture node. So if we hit this little button here to expand, uh, you can see there's a mapping tool here. And here, we can change the rotation of our background image. And when we do that, we change the way that the lighting works in the scene, which can be very useful depending on kind of the look and feel we want. Um, so you can basically use these toggles to change all that. Realistically, I only change rotation um, because that tends to be what the stuff's most useful and you can see like just by rotating that i've already changed the look of it um that's wonderful now when you render this out you might not want this like background environment because you may find it distracting um so if you don't want that 
um, go to your render tab, which is this like, camera here, and you see this button here called film, uh, and there's a tick that says transparent, and that'll basically like take it out so that when you render, you don't have to see it. Um, and then the final thing I'd add on this, um, just in terms of using it as a reference, is going back to our, our skull texture. Uh, if you go to uh, the material properties again, um, and you go to uh, the roughness, obviously we, we set our skull quite shiny. If you increase that roughness, you really begin to see how that um, affects um, the reflections in the scene. So if I take that to like 0.4, say, and render that out, you can see I have like things like bounce reflections and um, like essentially a map to use for a miniature painting that doesn't fully reflect the scene. Um, but but that is it. I mean, that that's basically all the, the knowledge that you need in terms of like how to generate quick lighting maps. Um, what I would do is I would have a play. Like that is how I learn software. It's how I kind of find a bit of joy in this hobby. Um, so go, go back to um, our lovely um, Sketchfab like start finding stuff that is of interest to you like nights and people and things i will say that this site can get weirdly not safe for work in places so like do be careful um but you know if you want your hunky dudes to uh, render models for you go right ahead and uh, and have fun with it um so i hope that's useful uh, like i say a bit of a different guide for us um a bit of a niche topic um but potentially something that will be useful to people out in the wider world and thank you and get painting